Well, welcome to the Honey Optics Test Bench, uh, where we're going to talk about cameras today, if you can believe it, um, and specifically um, the pros and the cons of using something like a Honey Optics PTZ camera versus some traditional camcorder size cameras, uh, especially when it comes to live streaming. Uh, so I've gathered up a few examples of kind of the most common ones that you will find in the higher quality, you know, more than a thousand dollar price bracket. If you, when you're spending money on live stream equipment, it's always advisable to spend um, as really as much as you can as the camera because that is the thing that is originating all of your video and you want that to be as highest quality as possible um, so that when you invest in more equipment and maybe better equipment downstream, you're ready to go. So if you're able to spend maybe a little bit more um, in that department when you're getting set up, it is a nice place to invest your cash um, and it's an investment that will keep paying off in the future. So what I've gathered here are some really popular and kind of standard options for people in this space looking for a high quality camera to live stream with. So first we have a couple options from Sony. Now this is the Sony uh, XA11, um, the current model uh, that you would really find today is the XA15, which has a few features um, and I think a slightly bumped up on the optic side, but form factor and feature wise is gonna be about the same. This comes in a kind of standard camcorder package, something that you're used to seeing, maybe something a little smaller uh, version of it uh, that you might use for home use. Uh, this is really considered like a prosumer camera. It's kind of on the low end of the professional market, very high end on the consumer market. Um, couple of nice features about this um, is this extensive audio system. If you need an all-in-one solution, meaning you're looking for your camera not only capture the uh, video, but also the audio um, of your stream or whatever it is you're doing. Um, having these more advanced audio input options on a camera like this is really handy. You can see this one actually has dual XLR input, so you can use like a shotgun style mic um, on top of it. And then it's got individual audio controls um, on this side as well, so you can set the levels um, from the two different ones. So you really can, if you would like, capture full stereo uh, if you have two shotgun mics you want to use, um, or you can use uh, one that's kind of uh, maybe a shotgun style that's kind of capturing like a wide view, um, and then maybe you've got somebody else like wired up to a wireless or a lapel, and you want that um, on the other channel, you can capture both of those at the same time. So really, the advantage of this one is its form factor, its portability, it's got a nice kind of grip and handle thing here, um, and, and it's really robust audio controls. Um, now, this also is something that you have to control. Uh, so either you're gonna mount it in your space if you're always live streaming from inside a space like a church or a, a convention center or something like that, you're either gonna have to mount it somewhere and the angle and the picture that you get is the one that you get, um, or you're gonna have to have an operator for it who can move it around. The other um, thing on this one is while the audio input controls are good and the video is good, with this you're only getting 1080p or HD video quality, which is what a lot of live streaming um, equipment uses today, so it's not bad, um, but the world really is moving and moving very quickly to 4K, uh, and if you don't capture 4K, you can't broadcast 4K. Um, so. This is a great option, especially if you're looking for audio controls um, and, and things like that, or portability. Uh, it's got a battery on it. It has a dual uh, SD card capture. Um, if you're looking for something that you're gonna mount and just kind of hang out with um, and, and not really use all those extra audio stuff, um, you're paying for a lot of features then that you're not gonna use. So that is, which one's this? Oh, this is the XA11 or XA15 as you would find it today. The other option from Canon that is really popular um, is this guy. Um, and while this kind of looks like a DSLR um, uh, style, style camera, it is a DSLR style camera, but it is not a DSLR camera. It is all one unit. The lens is not removable, but it comes in a similar four factor. Okay, so this is the XC10. Um, and nice features about this is you don't have all those robust um, audio inputs and outputs. You do have a standard eighth inch 3.5 millimeter audio in um, if you would like to record that way. Um, I actually record all of my videos um, using uh, that 3.5 millimeter in. Um, so that's a valid way to do it. Um, and it's very compact, has a nice form factor. And this one does shoot um, in 4K. 
uh, in the con like in the professional market, this is considered a really solid kind of B or C camera. Maybe not the primary camera you're going to shoot with, um, but you know for you know that that kind of secondary shooting or backup shooting or whatever, uh, this is a really popular option because of the quality it offers and its portability um, and all of that. So you're not paying for you know, those, those audio inputs here because this is not really the camera you would do that with, uh, but what you are getting is um, a better optics chip um, than on the 11 over here. Um, you're getting that 4K compatibility, which is nice. Um, now, if you actually want to record the 4K, um, you're actually gonna have to do it um, on a, a uh, compact flash card or um, uh, uh, one of the newer cards that you can't do it on the SD card. Um, you can shoot in regular um, 1080 um, if you would like to. Um, and I do believe um, that both of these on their HDMI outs um, are limited to um, 1080p out. Um, so if you want to record, you can record in 4K, uh, but you're not going to get 4K out of it um, if you want to then move that downstream to a streaming rig. And again, same limitation that basically, uh, if you want to use this for streaming, you're going to set it, um, and that's where it's going to be, unless you have a camera operator to actually control um, and do those things for you that, of course, have to be physically close to the camera. Certainly doable, um, but something to think about. Now, I'm not showing you a DSLR option, even though DSLRs are really popular for shooting video, uh, primarily because most DSLRs on the market today honestly, because of legal reasons, um, can only shoot video um, up to about 30 minutes. Uh, and then they go, uh, they automatically turn off. Uh, and in fact, that's something you have to consider uh, when using a camera like this that were primarily built and designed for recording uh, video that, sure, it's got an HDMI out on it and you can use it for live streaming, but there are um, some uh, settings you're gonna have to tweak on it uh, because otherwise it's gonna try to go to sleep on you <laughs> when it's not recording. Um, some people will use the HDMI out and record at the same time to just get you know both of those options uh, going at once and maybe get a backup recording and that kind of stuff. So if you're wanting like a more full and robust live streaming setup uh, where you want dedicated cameras, um, or at least a couple of them, um, and those sorts of things, that is where um, looking into the world of the, four, uh, the PTZ cameras makes a lot of sense. And again, for future proofing, going for um, a 4K PTZ, uh, like all of our Honey Optics PTZs, is a really great way to go. Now, what are you not getting with that? Well, it doesn't have the ability to cord. Most, I don't, I have not seen any PTC camera on the market yet that has an SD card slot in it yet. That's not what it's for. It's to capture signal, capture video, and then send it out either through the HDMI output, most of them also have an SDI output, which is good if you're going longer range, um, or um, as in all of our Honey Optics, an NDI out, which actually sends the video signal out through your network um, and then is accessible anywhere on your network. Uh, they're great because they are, you, you're not actually designed or supposed to control them manually by yourself. Um, they're meant to be recorded, uh, controlled remotely uh, by a PTC controller, uh, and that can talk to the camera over the network. Um, so anywhere you can get um, uh, the controller on the same network as the camera, if it's in the same room, if it's in a different room, however you want to do it, um, you have that flexibility and the ability to do it. Uh, of course, they're not really considered portable. It's not something you would, um, you could take it and set it up somewhere, but you're not going to like handhold it um, or anything like that. It's not for that. Um, in the case of our Honey Optics, they do shoot 4K. Uh, they use a they use a Sony uh, style image, a Sony a genuine Sony image processor, which is a high quality processor you'll find in Sony's own cameras, um, and they do output 4K uh, on both uh, the HDMI out and the uh, NDI out. So you can get 4K out of there and capture that into uh, your streaming platform if you're streaming with 4K. So it's really a use case thing, and that's the really thing to consider um, is you know, how much you're going to use it in different ways. It can be tempting to think, well, I may want to take it portable someday, so maybe I want to get one of these portable rigs. If you think you're really going to do it, that's fine. Almost everybody that I've run into, churches and other venues um, that run live streaming, uh, they end up getting the camera, they end up getting, sending the camera up where, the way that they want it. It's a pain in the rear to move it, so they don't, and it just sits there. Uh, so I believe that's why for live streaming especially, um, the, the 4K and the higher end PTZs 
are the way uh, that most places are going and, and looking to do it. Um, that way just for, it makes all the features um, that they need um, and you're not paying for a lot that you likely don't. We run three PTZs um, you know, at my church where you know we do streaming there. That's uh, a lot of people can get away with less than that, two or one. Um, it, is a, it is a good way to do it. Um, but the portable options are there for you if you would like those as well. So do think about those use cases as you're thinking about which camera uh, setup you want to invest in. Uh, there may be a, a, a value to have maybe one PTZ camera um, that's permanent in your space and then a secondary camera getting a kind of static um, like kind of wide shot or something like that um, that then you could use for portable portability later if you want to. Um, I've seen that set up a lot of times and, and that can work as well. Um, but think through that use case, that convenience. How much do you want to set up every time you need to stream um, versus how much can you invest in stuff that just sits and does what it does um, and you can just set it up the way that you want it. Okay, well, thank you uh, for joining me for this quick little video um, here at the test bench and I hope you have a great day.